All right, you are still watching Ways. Now, Aged Care Employee Day is observed annually on August 7th to honor those who provide care for the elderly. It requires an extraordinary quality um, of skills, well, patience, and compassion to care for the elderly people in their twilight years. Thus, the day functions as an expression of gratitude for nurses and care workers, drivers, chefs, cleaners, and all volunteers who are always available to ensure that our senior citizens re uh, receive the necessary companionship and assistance. This is a very special day to my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Caregiving. Because I had the opportunity to care for my grandfather before he passed. Oh. And, ah, boy. You know how you see someone that is always very agile and everything, and all of a sudden, you know, he had partial stroke. And I remember the day that we were trying to get him to... I've shared this story several times, but every time I share it, it's almost like bringing tears to my eyes. Like, you know, we were trying to get him to pull because he had not... He hadn't had bowel movement for, for a while, so my mom had sent some recipes from Kaduna that we should make for him. So eventually, you know, I remember by, I have a cousin that she's quite huge. So she held him. We held, you know, we, we all of us braced. It was all his grandchildren taking care of him, actually. And I remember just seeing him. He couldn't talk at that point, so, but tears just came down his mm -hmm. cheek. I just knew. By the time I went back to school, I mean, I got a call, I think a few weeks later that he had passed because he had always said it that he didn't want to be a burden to his children so yeah. that if he becomes that uh, in that state of, you know, like um, helplessness, mm. that state of becoming like a vegetable or whatever, that he would rather let, let God take his life than true to his wishes. You know, so when I saw that tear down his, his, his cheek, I just knew that, ah, mm. this man is not ready to fight this thing. You know, so, and recently my father went to visit his older sister. Oh my God, he was so cute. <laughs> he put... He put her in a care home in oh, Benin. Oh. I didn't even know they had a care home. Interestingly, they pay about, I think, seven hundred to 800000 every year oh. annually to, to care for them. And, and if you see the room she was in, very neat. In Edo State, in Benin, yeah. Very neat. So she's so petty. Because my dad is quite petty. So now she has shrunken. She's so tiny. I said, for my dad to be, because my dad was looking like a, a giant beside her. I said, uh -huh. I, I, for my dad, that is to be looking at me, she must be really, really tiny. Mm. But he said they are, they're taking good care of her and all of that, you know. So he is, you know, he went to Benin recently and went to check on her and he was so happy, you know, to see that they were taking care of her. So do you have any old person around you? <laughs> Incidentally, you know, just as you were talking about your grandfather, I remember my grandfather as well. I was, I was literally the last person with him when he passed, Aww. you know. And it's, it's a memory for me because it, it was just um, crazy in the last minutes. Like, I mean, you know, someone who is so agile, who is so in control, you know, suddenly losing that control, yeah. you know, for them, a lot of them can deal well with that, mm -hmm. especially if they are very independent, you know. So like him to my father as well, you know. Um, weeks to when he was going to pass, he always said, it, "Oh, I don't ever want to be a burden. I don't want to, you know." I want to so, say that yeah, grand, yeah. yeah. So even I prayed. I I I prayed about it. I, I didn't want my dad to suffer. I didn't want him to get into a a, a state where you know we taking care of him were even tired because that's also a burden mm -hmm. on the on the caregivers, people mm -hmm. taking care of the sick ones. So. For me, I would just say that um, caregiving is sometimes a thankless job, but we have to acknowledge the sacrifice. It's a lot, it, it's a lot of well, sacrifice. Send our hugs yeah. and our kisses yeah. and our yeah. thank yous to yeah. every care um, giver, especially yeah. for the aged people, yeah. Yeah. every employee yeah. out there. We say thank you. Thank you so you. much. God bless you. Yeah. And keep doing the job. Because that job, trust me, is only God. Your reward mm. is in heaven. All right, Uti Elu, quickly, let's run through our news. What did you find for us in the news? Reads, Namdi Kanu abolishes sit at home in Southeast, introduces EED. So I had seen this letter, um, I believe it was last week, uh, the handwritten letter by the detained leader of the Pro Biafra group, the Indigenous People of Biafra, IPOP, um, stating that all forms of sit at, sit -at home um, had been abolished in the southeast, which of course occurs 
every Monday. Now, I remember then it was being debated. So this story sort of caught my attention where the, um, there's been a follow-up to that to say that every Monday has now been declared EED, which stands for Economic em Empowerment Day. Um, and this has been disclosed in another statement by the IPUB Media and Publicity Secretary, Ima Powerful. So to explain what the EED means, um, it connotes a day set aside for mass mobilization of Biafrans to devote their resources and means towards reversing the sharp and unprecedented decline in the economic, educational, and social needs of the of, um, of Biafrans occasioned by the prolonged sit at home. So people of Biafra are encouraged to embark on um, deploying their resources to the empowerment of educationally disadvantaged and, po and poverty-ridden population of our people. So this is a, a huge turnaround, of course, um, from the situation that has been ongoing. Um, in fact, it has, it has become the norm in the Southeast for everything to grind to a halt um, on Mondays. So this is really a welcome, uh, welcome uh, development in that situation. And of course, now trying to turn that around for the positive to say that um, they now need to start to work and focus on reversing the effects of that sit at home. Now, what it truly means in terms of um, actual activity, I'm not sure what that looks like because, I mean, if you look at the things that we're talking about, um, education, healthcare, so are we talking about feeding people on that day? Um, are you paying school fees? Like, just again, further insights into what is needed because it says through education, employment, health services, sense of identity and community, our people and indeed the Eastern region can begin to thrive and grow. So that just further gives insights into the areas that should be focused on mm. so that people can um, improve their lives um, and improve the situation in the region. So welcome development, hoping that um, it is indeed adhered to as much as the sit at home was adhered to um, so that the entire region can recover from that the impact of that um, well, of that experience. I hope they recover. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I hope so. All right, so Jella, quickly, what did you find for us? In okay, so um, this is a sad one. Um, a um, mob beats Lagos policeman to stupor for pushing man crushed by BRT. Um, an eyewitness um, account um, stated that... Um, a young man today was um, a victim of this, and um, this happened because um, a policeman and his colleagues were trying to, were attempting to dispossess um, him of his vehicle, and in that process, um, they pushed him, and unfortunately, they pushed him into the BRT lane. Meanwhile, there, there's a, there was an incoming um, BRT bus on that lane, so it crushed the guy. Um, did, buy, did the guy die? Uh, well, fortunately, he didn't. At the time, you know, this report came out um, where you were said that he sustained um, very serious degrees of injury and um, he has been taken to the hospital. Mm -hmm. It is our hope that he survives this, mm -hmm. you know, and gets back to good health. Mm -hmm. But again, we must say that um, jungle justice, you know, is never the way forward because... This policeman that was beaten by the mob, like he was beaten to a point where he literally fainted, and nobody knew if they, nobody knows if um, that he could have sustained an internal injury. Again, it's easy to say that well, um, you know, um, serves him right, but I mean, there's no need to. Pay that's back exactly. Just that's hand him over to ex the exactly. My story is quite disturbing because I've been seeing the videos over the weekend, so mm. I thought to just you know bring it up. It's been happening in the United States of America. Mm. Um, shop heist has become a pandemic across pandemic. the United States of America. I mean, there are a series of videos like it is countless. Um, a lot of mobs going to different stores, going to designer stores. You know, just going and looting things like it's so. It's so ridiculous. Like, you, I mean, you see in the shopping mall, security personnel struggling to pull back the, um, uh, what's it called? The, no, not even the mob. This one, 
single people that will just enter the store to and just pack like a bunch of things. So like it's a it's a fight. So I don't know where this is coming from. Is it as a result of maybe economic hardship or whatever? Mm -hmm. Because one other guy took a rack. I don't know if they have videos. We can you know play them as SF. You know one of the guy had a rack. You know and he was just pulling out those racks from the from the stores. So this has become a pandemic in the U.S. Like a lot of people are just going into stores looting. There was um, a Gucci store too that was just completely raided. You know, and you know, people cannot even do anything. You can't really yeah. um, at, uh, go there to say you want to try to to stop them. They've mm. gone to jewelry stores. They've gone to gold shops. Like wow. they break the listen with they come with some metals. You know, and uh, there was one I saw. Uh, I think this was Walmart. The 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 staff kind of like struggled the because those guys had two. They had filled two shopping carts and they were already going with it. So the, thankfully, the security, the uh, the staff at, at Walmart, you tussled it mm. because that's what's been happening. Yeah. So if the staff are not ready to fight them off, mm. then they let them go. But some stores, you see this, the staff struggling to pull back those um, shopping carts. I really don't know what this, <laughs> where it's going from. But you see, why I am really worried, right, is um, I pray that we don't get to this states, you know, in Nigeria. Again, when we talk about excessive hardship or whatever, these people have not even seen half of what we are seeing. And they're already acting like this. So, like, literally, I, I want the government to understand that there's a bit of threshold to what yeah. people can take. You understand? You know, these people are not even used to suffering. Mm. Somehow. Because the government is always giving you one thing or the other to just, you know, like, palliate it. Yeah. Like yeah. We are used to it. So, if, 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 if we cross yes, over, if yeah. It crosses beyond mm. what people can take. I don't know how you know, it will be managed because trust me, what we, we saw, saw a bit of that saw, in in saw, what yeah. we saw during the aftermath mm -hmm. of the NSAS mm -hmm. protest, where people went into different stores to go and loot and all of that, that would just be the tick. Because okay, yeah. it would be that people would just be going to your houses. It's almost like it's their right. You can't drive your cars anymore. They will smash your windows and take whatever it is they want to. So we need to really understand that, you know, hardship can bring out the, the craziness in people. And let's try as much as possible to see how we can, you know, keep it. Yeah. Um, sad, um, same for, for everyone. Let's just try. Let it be manageable. All right, we'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, hopefully we'll have our guest and we'll discuss this ministerial screening with Dr. Um, what's his name? Bosun Tijani. Stay with us. We'll be right back.